Rise to your feet as well. And let's welcome God's presence into our midst. And let's get ready for a wonderful morning. Amen. All right, Father God, we thank you for bringing all of us here for your continued protection over every family, over every person. God, we continue to ask for your hand of healing to come across the nation of Malaysia and throughout all the world. Lord, we look to you in times where we are uncertain, in times where we feel like we don't know what's going to happen, we don't know what to do, but we thank you that God, you are our anchor. We thank you, God, that you are our firm foundation and with you, all things are possible. So thank you, Lord. We look to you this morning in worship. We look to you this morning with excitement. And Lord, we open our hearts to receive your presence, to receive your joy again, and to reignite our faith. Thank you, Lord. Commit all of this into your precious name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. All right, take it away, worship team. Good morning, church. How's everyone doing this morning? Everyone wide awake? <laughs> it's a pretty chilly morning, ain't it? <laughs> Anyways, I just want to start this morning by asking all of you, how many of you are believing for breakthroughs this morning? We're in the presence of God. Come on. How many of us are believing for breakthrough in our family, in our nation, in our businesses, in our lives, in our loved ones? Amen. For God, nothing is impossible for Him. Amen. I just want to start off by reading this psalm, Psalm 46. It says that God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fail. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth's melt. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. Amen. The God, he's the Lord, he's our refuge. Amen. This morning, we just want to go through a new song with you all. We, this is not really that new. We, we actually sang it two years ago during uh, Global Worship Day. And it's such a powerful song of declaration that as we declare that there's nothing that our God cannot do. Amen? Amen? There's nothing that he can do. Amen? All things are possible for him. All things are, you know, he can do everything. So I'm just going to go through, let's just go through the chorus together just so that we can get familiar with the song. Alright? It goes like this. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a mountain that he can move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. There's nothing. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not. There's not a prison wall He can break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God. Come on, we sing that one more time. That chorus. There's nothing. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a mountain that He can move. Yes. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. There's nothing. There's nothing that our God can. Not a prison wall. There's not a prison wall that can break through. Yes, oh, praise. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. Y'all got it? Let's go. Come the storm that surrounds me with just one word, just one word. The darkness has to retreat. Yes, do you believe it? Just one word, just one touch. I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch. My eyes were open to see my heart. Come on, we sing this chorus together with one voice. There's nothing that our God can do. Yes, there's not a mountain that He can move. We praise your name, Lord. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's 
As we sing this bridge, it says, I will believe for greater things because there's no power like the power of Jesus. Amen. Come on, we sing this together. Sing, I will believe. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Come on, we sing it. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree, there's no power like His power, there's nothing that I got to do, yeah, there's not a mountain that He can move, we praise the name, oh praise the name, that makes a way, there's nothing that I got to do.
Come on, we sing the music together, you know. Shine your light forever and ever. Shine your light forever. Yeah, you know it. Shine your light. Shine your light in the world. Oh, that's so beautiful. We sing it to him. Shine your light forever and ever. Shine your light forever and ever. Shine your light. Shine your light in the world. Sing shine your light. Come on. Shine your light forever and ever. Shine your light forever and ever. Shine your light. Shine your light in the world. Sing shine your light. Shine your light forever and ever. Shine your light forever and ever. Shine your light. Shine your light. Sing one more time. Shine your light. Oh, shine your light. Sing. Shine your light forever and ever. Shine your light forever and ever. Shine your light. Shine your light in the world. Sing praise. Praise Him with all of the music. The name Shun of Creation with all of the nation. We praise him, we praise all your heart. Praise him with all of your heart. Sing, praise him in this generation. Jesus, the light of salvation. We praise him, we praise him, praise him with all of the a great God. He is strong. He is mighty. He is our healer and His power is just awesome. And that is our God. That is our God.
that we are more than conquerors. For God, because we are convinced there is neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God, we hold on to your word because in your love there is no fear. God, we declare your word in our lives, in this church, in this land, in the world, every nation, every country, that we will sing how great is your love. Let us understand a little bit more, comprehend a little bit more. How great is the measure of the love of our God. sing again how great is your love
this place we praise the Lord in this place come on give him another clap offering we praise you Lord we love you Lord there's no one else like you God there's no one else like you not a love in this world more better than yours thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord truly who is there like you no one else can compare to you. No God in this world can claim that they died for their followers. No God in this world can say that I would give up my life freely 
for those that I love. Greater love has no one than this, than he who lays his life down for his friends. Wow. What an amazing notion that God calls us friends. Right now, all over this place, would you just lift your hands and just thank God. Thank you, Lord. You call me your friend. You call me your son. You call me your daughter. You call me yours. That such a great and powerful God would just take me by the hand and walk with me day by day. Would you receive that, church, wherever you are? It's so good. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your provision. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. There's so much to thank you for. Even in the midst of confusion and sorrow, even in the midst of uncertainty, we thank you, God, because you are with us. And God, right now, as we are all in one place and our hearts are joined to yours, Lord, we join our hearts with our brothers and sisters abroad in Ukraine and in Russia. Lord, as they face the threat of war, something that we don't have to deal with, as they face loss, as they face hurt, as they face betrayal, God, which which your love just shine through that situation right now. God, we speak that same love that we sing about today into that situation. And God, we pray. God, we pray that the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God, we speak your peace over the nation of Ukraine and Russia. And Lord, we thank you that the same God whom we worship is the same God that's available for those people. So God, you hear the cries of your people all over this world. You hear our cries and thank you, Lord, that you are not deaf to us. But God, you reach down to us and Lord, you pull us up out of darkness into your glorious light. So God, we thank you that you are a God who loves us so much that you would come down to our situation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you in this place this morning. And Lord, we commit all of us into your hands. Open our hearts to you. Open our minds. Open our eyes to see and our ears to hear your voice. And Lord, we receive you in this morning. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone, let's give him one more clap offering. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hello, hello, testing. All right. Hello, Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'll keep that further away. Thank you for putting up with the uh, technical issue. Uh, yeah, I'll just put this here. Thank you. I'll take this away later. All right. Good morning, church, once more. Good to see everyone worshipping and lifting their hands. Uh, I have the pleasure of doing the announcements with you again this morning. Um, so uh, before I get to that, can I just have a show of hands? If you're new or if you've not been to GBC in a long time, can I just ask you to raise your hands? You don't have to be shy. It's all right. If you're here for the first time, we'd like to welcome you. There we go. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. You are our VIP this morning. Welcome. So glad you could join us. All right. Uh, if, if, if you're truly new, uh, we'll get the ushers right there. All right. We might give you something. So ushers. All right. Uh, and if you're joining us online for the first time as well, welcome. We are so glad you could join us. Uh, someone will wish you in the chat as well. So we do hope you will connect with us as well. So good to have you with us. All right, on to the first announcement. We have something exciting coming up in March, and that is our church annual general meeting, our AGM. All right, it will happen on the 20th of March at 1 p.m. Uh, just to let you know, it's going to be on site. So we won't have an online version of AGM. So uh, we invite you to come to GBC, all right, to impact, to, uh, to be a part of it. 
Uh, we also want to announce that our uh, Bible study courses, all right, our uh, Christian education, uh, that there's another link for you to sign up, all right, uh, and it's going to be run by our good brother Mock. Thank you, uh, Brother Mock, for helping us to do all this. So uh, we will be starting our first uh, Christian education on the 5th of March. Uh, and the next one will also be the following week after that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it will be on the 5th and the 12th of March. So uh, just in case you want to know what this is all about, what this Christian education is about, uh, the class is about uh, why we need to study the Bible, all right, uh, about Bible study, about commentary, about uh, uh, dictionary, eSword, internet, all right, how to use all these tools to enrich your Bible study at home. All right, it's good to know the Word. It's good to dig deep to really understand uh, uh, the, the mysteries in the Word. There's so much gems that we can find. So if you want to know more about how to do Bible study, please sign up. There will be a link in our WhatsApp group on GBC Broadcast, uh, which you can sign up for. All right? So we do encourage you, come. Come for our uh, Christian education. All right, thank you. Uh, and now we have our prayer meeting every Wednesday at 8.30 online. This is our online prayer meeting. Uh, again, we would like to encourage you to join us. Join our hearts in prayer. We have so many things to pray for. But uh, praise God that as we come, we can just release all our prayers to God. The Bible says that, you know, not to be anxious about anything, but in all things, to come to God with prayer and thanksgiving. Amen. So let's do that this Wednesday. Uh, next slide. We have our tithes and offerings. As we continue in this atmosphere of worship, we would like you to uh, uh, think about giving your tithes uh, to God. Thank you again for your generous giving. If you'd like to give uh, online, the details are on screen. Uh, our Georgetown Baptist Church May Bank account number is there and checks payable as well. Uh, if you are online, there should be a QR code as well for you to do touch and go payment. And if you're here live and you don't want to deal with all this online mambo jumbo, uh, we have our black box over there to my left, your right, and you can give physically as well. So again, thank you for your generous giving. And lastly, we have our social media. We continue to ask you to uh, join our Facebook and our Instagram. And uh, if you want to know more about the life of our church or what's going on, you can hop onto our website as well. Georgetown, uh, Georgetown BAP, <laughs> Georgetown BAP at gbcpg.org. Uh, so thank you for that. And I believe that's all the announcements I have today. So as we come, uh, let's get ready for the word. Let's open our heart to the word. We will have our good brother, Brian, sharing the word with us this morning. So will we give him a hand? And let's welcome him to the stage. Thank you so much, Matthew, for bringing uh, the announcements. And always a, a, a joy to see him up here giving announcements because uh, he has so much enthusiasm, so much energy, and it's contagious. Hallelujah. All right, let me just get everything sorted out. Is this okay? Yeah, thank you. It's a little bit of feedback. So, how are you today, church? You know, uh, we're supposed to live in, in a very exciting season where things are opening up, things are re-emerging, and there are lots of opportunities for us to grow. Uh, for the young people, there's a lot of opportunities for you to grow in your career, uh, even for businesses. But there are so many of us, perhaps, we are kind of still stuck in the after pandemic where you still feel a little bit jaded, a little bit sien and maybe a little bit burnt out uh, with how you are right now. Um, someone just told me uh, just a few days ago that they feel deflated, like a punctured tire, uh, because perhaps the things that you hope for haven't seemed yet to materialize. Or maybe something that's worse than that, that you've placed so much effort in building something, a business, a venture, or a relationship, and things are not working out so well. And perhaps in this time, everything has failed, collapsed. 
and you are perhaps left with your faith fractured. And you feel a little bit disappointed with God and maybe you yourself have disappointed God. And one of the most important passages in all Scripture is when Jesus reinstates Peter after the resurrection in John chapter 21. How uh, faith that is fractured was being restored. And a little bit about Peter. Peter went through an amazing three years of uh, missionary uh, journey and doing ministries with Jesus. And he left everything behind. He left his family, he left his career, and he followed Jesus. And he believed that Jesus was the Messiah, the one that was uh, longed for and hoped for that would bring restoration to Israel, that would set them free from the occupation of the Romans. And Peter saw that this was his big chance to really make a difference in his life. And that's why he chose to left everything behind and follow Jesus. But when Jesus was crucified, Peter's hope was shattered. All that he has envisioned and all that he has dreamt of, everything just came crashing down to almost nothing. And maybe you know how it feels like to have your hopes, your dreams dash, and all that Peter have given up for, you understand that all things seem to have come to a waste, all your efforts. And then we come to the most depressing moment for Peter. And it's here in John chapter 21, verse 3. Peter says to his friends, I'm going out to fish. And the other disciples say to him, okay, we'll join you. Let's go together. You know, Peter went back to his old life, the life that he had before following Jesus. He went back to fishing. And that's because he didn't know what to do. He was very lost. Peter's faith was fractured. And the same Peter who once passionately declared to Jesus, saying that, you know, I will lay down my life for you. And even when others forsake you, I will be with you to the very end. And I will not desert you. Well, we know that Peter became very fearful when Jesus was arrested. And he also denied Jesus not once, not twice, but three times. Just imagine for Peter the amount of guilt and shame that he has. It's really unbearable, isn't it? <clears throat> well, maybe you can relate to this. Maybe you, can, you understand this kind of guilt, this kind of shame, where really it paralyzes us. But the good news is this. In Jesus, there's life there's forgiveness, there's restoration. And the reason Jesus appeared to his disciples by the shore, by the Sea of Galilee, and there on the beach, Jesus had this conversation with Peter that would change his life, that would um, change the course of what he is about to begin. And in this conversation, Jesus says five phrases to Peter that would restore him, that would heal his heart, that would put his faith together and set him on a new direction in life. Today, if you need to be restored, if you need your heart to be healed, put your faith to get back together again and have a new direction. These words of Jesus, they can change your life too. So why don't we just turn our Bibles to John chapter 21 and let me read it to you from verses 15 to 25. When Jesus had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? 
Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. And for the third time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now, Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you to where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. And this was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. And if every one of them were written down, I suppose even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Amen. So what are these five phrases that Jesus says to Peter that I believe that would completely change your life, our lives, for the better. And the first is this. Jesus says, do you truly love me? Do you truly love me? And he asks this three times in verse 15, 16, and 17. You know, the starting point of truly flourishing in your life is understanding this deep knowledge that God loves you and you can love him in response to his love. John writes in his first letter, in chapter 4, verse 19, we love because God first loved us. And how do we know that God loves us? He demonstrates his love in this way, that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. And in the words of Jesus, he says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Jesus demonstrates this very statement that he had said, by dying on a cross for you and me. And the very familiar Sunday school song, when I read this and I was preparing this message, it just comes to me. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves you. Do you love him? You know, loving God and loving Jesus is the start of life and any restoration. You know, remember how we first became a Christian? You know, I believe all our hearts were on fire when we found Jesus as our Lord and Savior. But after years of being a Christian, for some of us, after serving God for so long, you know, and, and, and just having a lot of, uh, going through a lot of hard knocks in life, somehow a heart can grow cold, can grow lukewarm. You know, a good friend uh, of mine who recently confided in me, he's just a, another young adult just like me, you know, he was saying to me that, you know, Brian, I lost that joy in serving. And he's very stretched. He's, uh, he, his song leads in church. He's a cell group leader. 
he's, he also preaches in, 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 in his church once a while. And he's really on this verge of giving up. I remember meeting him at, 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 at a coffee place and he was just pouring his out to me. And he knows that his heart didn't sit well and didn't sit right with God. And his humble prayer request uh, uh, to me is this, Brian, could you please pray for me that I would experience God's love again? Jesus commanded the church of Ephesus for their hard works and their perseverance in, in, in the gospel. And, but then Jesus said this to them in Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Maybe for that friend, and maybe for some of us, we have forsaken our first love of Jesus. You know, we cannot move on and we cannot move forward without returning to our first love of Christ. Just like Peter, he couldn't move forward without returning to the very basic foundation that is loving God and loving Jesus. Jesus graciously asked Peter if he had loved him three times, mirroring the exact time of how Peter denied Jesus. Peter, or rather, sorry, Jesus wanted Peter to know that he still loves him and that he wants him to be set free of the guilt and shame that he has. You know, God loves rekindles our ability to love him. And he starts the process of forgiveness, of healing and restoration. Today, do you desire that same serious restoration moment like Peter? Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that we can do all sorts of wonderful things that God has enabled us, whether to prophesy, whether to fathom mysteries, and even have mountain-moving faiths. But if we do not love, it all means nothing. Love is the most excellent way. How do we foster this love? And how do we find a renewed love for Jesus? We need to encounter Jesus himself. Earlier in John chapter 21, Peter and his other disciples went out on a boat fishing. And for the whole night, Liao Bo Hu caught nothing. And here, then morning came and Jesus was at the shore. And uh, in the Bible, it says that Jesus was about 90 meters away from the boat where Peter and the disciples were at. And the disciples didn't realize that it was Jesus at the shore. And Jesus called out to them, Hey, why don't try throwing your net on the other side, on the right side of the boat? So to them, well, they have been not having any fishes for the whole night, so why not give it a try? They have nothing to lose. And they threw the net on the other side, and they caught a miraculous catch of fish. And this is an exact repeat of the miracle that Jesus has performed when he initially called Peter into ministry in Luke 5. And Peter had this moment of realization. John said to Peter in verse, nine, uh, um, in verse 7, It is the Lord. It is the Lord. And Peter quickly grabbed his garment I believe he, he was topless, you know, that's what thrift men do when they go fishing. Grab on his garment, wrap it around, and he jumped off the boat, running towards the shore, 90 meters dashing, splashing, because he was desperate to have this fresh encounter with Jesus. Brothers and sisters, how desperate are you to have a fresh encounter with Jesus? Or for some of us, perhaps, even for those you have online, for some of us, a very first encounter with Jesus Christ. Today, we may not have like what Peter could have done to run over 
through the shore to meet with Jesus face to face. How do we encounter Jesus today? We encounter Him through His Word, reading the Bible, through prayer, and through communion and a committee of believers. believers. Um, in this season at Impact Gen, uh, which is the youth group of uh, Georgetown Baptist Church, um, we are starting a series on building momentums on spiritual disciplines. And it's something that we felt that we want to instill in our young generation. And actually tomorrow is the first day of this 20 days prayer challenge. And I'm very excited to really see our young people as they take on this step in faith and that they will encounter Jesus together as a youth group. Do you desire a fresh encounter with Jesus? The second thing that Jesus says to Peter is this, take care of my sheep. Take care of my sheep. Now, Jesus gave Peter an instruction regarding how he should respond and act towards his people, his followers. Peter was asked to take on this role of a shepherd and to shepherd the followers of Christ. Now, a shepherd's job is to care and to tend to his sheep. Well, naturally, shepherds should smell of sheep. And in the same way for us as Christians, we need to get up close to those whom we love and we serve. And the motivation of it all, behind all this, is the love that we have for Jesus. You know, oftentimes we find ourselves, especially for those who are serving, we find ourselves in a state of burnout. And it is not in the action of serving itself that burns you out, but it's in how you worked hard and serving and spending time. And along the way, you lose sight of the right motivation. Jesus didn't say to Peter that, feed my sheep first, then I will know you love me. But he said, do you love me? If so, feed my sheep. Take care of my sheep. When we love Jesus, the inevitable thing that will happen to us is that we will love other people. And in John chapter 13, verse 34, 35, Jesus says, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Now, love is like a muscle, right? It needs to be exercised to grow. And also like a muscle, if you don't work out, and this love will shrink and wither, and it will be covered in fats. And you can see, even though I'm wearing black, I have a lot of fats, all right? So it, love is a muscle. You need to exercise them, okay? And it has to be shown in action. You know, the, the saying goes that um, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And loving one another is part and parcel of the way in which how we can foster love for God further. You know, it's always a joy to see how people are changed by God and challenged by God, you know, and, and, and to serve in the, community, uh, in the community and the body of Christ. And um, I see it in my own cell group, my young adult cell group, um, people start off this year by making certain adjustments to serve because they know that they, they want to put love into action, serving the church, serving in different ministries, and even within the cell group, taking leadership in leading the word, in leading uh, icebreakers, and even for the young people at Impact Gen. Um, I just want to show you this, that this year we started off, you know, uh, challenging everyone in January. New year, new things, new beginnings. We all like that. And, and, and as, as, as they uh, take heed, it's truly amazing and a joy to see how God moved their hearts through, through, through the ministry. 
And I just want to show you that perhaps some of us think that no, God doesn't work in people's lives today. And what you see here in this screen is how uh, through a camp in December, an online camp, and how God spoke to many of these young people. And to my surprise, you know, sometimes I don't have so much faith uh, when we are in ministry. I, I thank God for, for people who work together with us in Impact Gen and even parents who have supported the ministry. But sometimes I don't have faith. And, uh, and this really surprises me, you know, how young people committing their hearts to God, rededicating their lives, coming to know Jesus. And even if you see on those red circles, you know, they would like to consider full-time ministry. And this is exciting times. And for some of you, you think that, you know, maybe God is working in someone else's lives, not my life. I tell you, this is proof that God works in our lives today. And if you desire God to work that the same way in your heart, desire an encounter with Jesus. And here in GBC, you know, we have so many opportunities for us. You know, just like these young people, they respond to God and they want to, 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 to serve and to be part of the body of Christ. We have wonderful opportunities here in GBC, across generations, across ministries, for you to be committed to join a ministry team, whether it's cell group, and to be shown ways on how you can put love into action in the body of Christ. And I just want to encourage you, if you have not already been involved in one way or another, maybe you have been tired, you have been taking a break because you're focusing in something else, maybe it's time for you to reconsider, to come back again. And Jesus, as Jesus says, take care of my sheep. The third thing that Jesus says to Peter is this, where you do not want to go. Where you do not want to go. You know, Jesus tells Peter that when he's older, you'll be led to somewhere you do not want to go. And it's very scary, isn't it? And John says this refers to the type of death that Peter would have glorified God. It's like Jesus telling Peter, this will be the end. And this is how it's going to be like for your life. And it's pretty mind-boggling, right, to think that Jesus might lead us to somewhere we don't really want to go. And then Peter, in Spider-Man, No Way Home, Peter Parker, he wanted to change the outcome of the reality in his universe. He didn't like it, and he wanted things his way, even though it's for good. But in the end, we know in the story, it was disastrous, and it brought so much pain and more saddening outcomes. If you haven't watched, sorry, this is a spoiler. Um, but that's the, that's the thing, you know, when life doesn't happen in a way we expected it, when our prayers are not answered and when things um, didn't go so well, we ask, why, Lord? Why this? Why me? Will we still say to Jesus, not, why, not my will, but yours be done? In Isaiah 55, verse 8 to 9, God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither your ways my ways, declares the Lord. And as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Where you do not want to go. You know, ancient writers state that about 34 years after this, Peter was crucified in Rome for his faith in Jesus, and just as Jesus has foretold. Now, the thing is this, brothers and sisters, even that the fact that Jesus might lead us to where we do not want to go, we can be rest assured that he will never lead us to where other than which that is best for the plans of your life and my life. Perhaps a better question in our, or a better prayer is that in our prayer, sometimes we pray that, God, I hope this doesn't happen. God, I hope you don't do this. Uh, 
a better question perhaps to ask in our prayer to God is this, Lord, where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to go? In this season, wherever phase of your life that you are in, Lord, where do you want me to go? Where do you want me to focus on and to trust that whatever God's answer is, it is the best outcome for your life, it is the best outcome for the kingdom of God, and even it is where you do not want to go, to trust that in the context of eternity, that this is the best plan for your life. Just as how Peter accepted it and he stayed faithful to what God has called him to, to what Jesus has called him to. And the fourth thing that Jesus says to Peter is this, follow me, follow me. It is a command from Jesus to Peter, follow me. And it's the same invitation for Peter when the very first miraculous catch of fish in Luke 5, when Jesus first called him at the start of the ministry. And Peter's first reaction back then in Luke 5, uh, when Jesus first called him was this, go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. And here in John 21, by then now, we could see Peter was shown true to the, to the statement that he gave in Luke 5. He abandoned Jesus. He denied him when Jesus needed him the most. And even though that Jesus already knew about these things would happen when he called Peter. And now in John 21, as he calls and recalls Peter, Jesus was fully aware of his past, his character, but it didn't matter to Jesus because Jesus loved Peter. Jesus died and risen for Peter. Jesus died and risen for you and for me. And he knows your past. He knows your flaws in the present. But yet, he has a plan, an amazing plan for you. I just want to share a story about following Jesus. You know, it's easy to follow Jesus when you are in a good seasons of your life, but it gets harder when times uh, is challenging and you are struggling. And I just want to share this wonderful testimony of a young man here in this church at Impact Gen. So this young man, he was struggling with lust and sexual sin for some time, uh, and even masturbation. And he find it so hard to, to, to express this struggle with someone else. And uh, before he approached me and talked to me about it, he was typing this message of trying to let me know and reach out that I'm struggling with this. And in his own words, he says, I was typing, and I was like, no, no, better not. I'll delete, I'll delete, delete, delete the message. And he was typing again, and he deleted it. You know, he's going back and forth, and then, and, and, and suddenly he felt that the Holy Spirit asked him to press send. And that's how uh, he reached out to, to, to me and to us here in Impact Gen. And he's asking to be prayed for, and he wanted to be accountable, you know, to, to the struggle that he's going. And I was so encouraged. And when I find out, um, well, before he reached out to us to be accountable, he, he, he was so serious with his faith about following Jesus. He knew that in this scene that he's struggling, it's not right. And he wanted to, he wanted to repent of it. He resorted even uh, to move his entire setup of his computer and laptop in the living room, right? How many young people would do that? Or how many adults would do that when you struggle with this, that you would go to that extent of trying to, you know, do the right thing. And I was very proud with this young man. You know, to follow Jesus, it takes a heart of surrender. It takes a heart that's obedient. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants Peter to follow him. 
And to follow Jesus, it doesn't mean to just walk with Jesus. What's more important, we need to walk like Jesus. You know, to walk like Jesus means how does our character, you know, does our character show and reflect Jesus? Do we display the fruit of the Spirit, the character of Jesus in how we live every day? Jesus says, follow me. And the fifth thing that Jesus says to Peter is this, what is that to you? What is that to you? You know, Jesus was having this moment, this transformational moment with Peter to restore his faith, to heal him. And this Peter is really interesting, isn't it? Instead of uh, saying something that, yes, Lord, I will follow you, the first thing he said after Jesus finished saying all these amazing things, his first response was to look at John and ask Jesus, Lord, what about him? What about him? You know, sometimes we, we, we fall into this trap of comparison and, and Peter was just being true to himself. Comparison is rarely a good thing. Comparison kills contentment. And we are often so tempted to try to, to live like someone else and, and, and to always be busybody of uh, what people are doing in their lives, what others are doing. And we fail to see and take a quick, good look at ourselves. Rather than focusing on how we should follow Jesus and what Jesus has called us to do and to know what He has for us, we think that we need to follow other people's footsteps. Perhaps we think that in order to be loved and accepted by God, we need to do something else or certain things. You know, in this season of uh, lockdown, when we spend too much time of, on uh, social media, whether Facebook, Instagram, uh, one of the good things is that uh, you receive a lot of advertisement, okay? Sponsored advertisements when you scroll through stories or what. And, and one of the very popular advertisements uh, is this is on DNA testing, selling you uh, uh, test kits. Uh, one of the famous ones, uh, I think it's, it's called Circle DNA, where they endorse a lot of uh, uh, artists, uh, famous people to, uh, for this product. And it's a very popular thing in this time of pandemic where people are locked down and in uh, within their homes and, and, and they were trying to discover the meaning of life and to try to understand who they really are. You know? And very interesting, very interesting thing about this DNA testing is that it helps you to identify how many percent uh, ethnicity you are, where are your roots, uh, where does your great-great-grandfather probably come from, maybe it's from Europe, maybe it's not China, you know, and it also gives you uh, some indication of how you should take care of your health and diet through your DNA, yeah. And um, there's also one show that I watch in Netflix, it's called, a documentary called Found, where they are Chinese adopted teenagers. They were adopted when they were a baby and they were adopted uh, uh, by families in the US and they were also uh, trying to find their real parents uh, and find to track back their roots all the way back to China and they did a lot of DNA testing as well. You know, church, today you do not need DNA testing to know who you are. You can know who you are in Jesus Christ. In Jesus, you are a son and daughters of the living God. You are co heirs with Jesus Christ the King and you are part of God's family because His Spirit lives in you, lives in me. And we can be contented with who we are in God. We just need to stay true to what God has called you, to be faithful, to be obedient, to follow Him. And don't worry about what others are doing in their lives, you know, or what they are not doing. But in the words of Jesus, what is that to you? Follow me. You follow me. Jesus says to Peter, you follow me. And trust in Him with your life and the plans that He has for you. I just want to call upon the worship team 
uh, to be up on the stage. You know, these five phrases of Jesus to Peter, you know, they completely restores Peter's fractured faith. It has healed his heart and sets him in a new direction. The Peter who was on the boat fishing, who was lost, who didn't know what to do, who was so much in guilt and shame. After encountering Jesus, this fresh encounter, what happened to him was that God used Peter mightily in the ministry of of the early church. He became the pillar of the early church and one of the most important leaders, spearheading the work of the gospel of Christ. A fractured faith being restored. You know, I, I want to be very honest with you. Um, you know, many of us, we started off the year fresh. I remember I was so encouraged by the message by some of our leaders about starting fresh, starting the year with the eyes of faith. And we have our goals and our dreams written plans, things that you want to achieve, you know. But somehow, things doesn't work out the way you wanted. And perhaps your faith is just like this paper from one clean sheet, full of hope, full of expectation, but it's fractured. And I tell you, I started off this year the same something like Peter my faith was very much fractured I remember the very first Impact Gen (coughs) service (coughs) excuse me I was preaching on new year new things it's supposed to gather all of us to be excited of what God wants to do in this new year but deep down in my heart I was so fractured I was so I feel I was unworthy to speak on this topic. Perhaps for many of you in this season, you are in this state. Even though it's just the very early of this year, you are fractured in your faith. Maybe it's in your relationship with your children, parents. Maybe you find it hard to overcome certain things in your life. For some of you, you're having, you're stuck in some way in the situations of your career or even your business and you couldn't overcome it. For some of us who have been serving, maybe some of you in a worship team, I do not know, you are tired. You know, in that very first message in Impact Gen, I have to be so honest with our young people that even we adults, we are not spared from hard knocks in life where our faith can also be very fractured today if this is you I do not know what's your situation even those up there if you feel just like this this fracturedness, this fragile and you really want just like Peter to have a fresh encounter with Jesus to know that God loves you to experience His love, to allow His love to restore you today, to allow His love to to really heal your heart and set you on this new direction. Maybe you're like me. You feel you're unworthy. You feel that there's maybe like Peter, there's so much guilt and shame. Jesus is ready to remove and set you free. So why don't we take this time and just reflect on what God is saying to you this morning. And as as the worship team sings this familiar, familiar song, my prayer is this, that the love of Jesus come into your heart once again. For those of you online, Spirit 
really be present with you and lead you to the love of Jesus once more. God's love afresh once again. Won't you be like Peter? Run out and dash out, rushing to Jesus to tell God, God, I want to have this fresh encounter with you today. If that is you, I want to encourage you. For those online, you click on the link. Someone will come and pray with you. And for those of us here, I do not know what you're going through. You know, I'm just a young man and I'm just pouring my heart to you. hope that you will do the same that you will pour out your heart not to me but to God today that he will meet you wherever you are and let us not let whatever you are having right whatever you have to struggle right now to go on any further because we have still have a long way ahead for this year let's start fresh let God restore that fracturedness in us today so if that is you, as we continue to allow the ministry team to minister to us in this song, this familiar song, I hope that the truth, the love of God will really work in your heart this morning. We have leaders here in, in person who is ready to pray with you and I want to invite you to come to receive prayer, to receive encouragement this morning. So why don't we just stand and continue to allow God Stretch out your hand to receive Him. Let His Spirit breathe in us. Sing, Jesus loves me, He will stay. Jesus loves me, He will stay. Close beside me all the Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he will die. Jesus loves me, he will die. Heaven's gate, heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let his little child come. 
sing yes Jesus yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me the loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong loves me yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me the Bible tells me so as we come to a close why don't we just stretch out our hands in the posture of receiving? And then let me just want to pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to continue to fill you with God's love. Heavenly Father, we come before you, O Lord, just as we are. Lord, despite, O God, whatever we are feeling, despite in whatever circumstance we are in today, Lord, want to ask in faith because in your words oh God that Jesus you have breathed into us your Holy Spirit and the spirit that's in us pours out God's love into our hearts in this posture of receiving Lord we ask oh God that you renew us afresh with your love through your spirit that God if there's any healing that needs to take place in our hearts, if there's any redirection that we desire, oh God, Lord, that you do that work right now in our hearts, oh Lord. And even as we leave this place, we're going to live, oh God, restored, refreshed, healed, and renewed in the name of Jesus. Now may the blessing of the Lord be upon you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord turn to His face towards you and be gracious to you. And may His face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. And I hope that today's message encourages you and reminded to you, especially when times is tough and your faith is fractured. So thank you very much and to those of you online, take care and see you again next week. Mm-hmm.